What's going on my dudes, One Step here with another Mortal Kombat 1 video. Today I am reviewing and giving my honest thoughts on the new Chaos Reigns update for Mortal Kombat 1. And we are talking strictly story. This has nothing to do with like the patch notes, the characters, the update. This is only the new story we got. And as you can see in this video right here, it's about an hour and a half uh, full story. I'm going to be going over the good, the bad, the ugly. And again, just giving my honest thoughts on the story as a whole. I beat it last night. I had a whole night to sleep on it. And I've really gathered my thoughts. Subscribe here for more Mortal combat content and let's just get into it so the good about the story i'll tell you right now my favorite thing about the story was the characters as a whole the characters are awesome they're fun i mean just look at this the game looks amazing i mean say what you want about mortal kombat 1 and the story itself and talk trash on it like i might be doing in a minute but mortal kombat knows how to do cinematics it just looks awesome the world is beautiful characters are great i mean even chaos realm itself where havoc's over it all this looks great too like i love the new worlds i love the new places that were visiting i love the new iterations of the characters like johnny cage here my personal favorite spotlights uh was rain and tanya they were amazing in this expansion and this scene right here this is probably the uh, one of the best scenes in the entire story it really got you choked up i feel bad we only got so much time with rain but it was really cool to see him as emperor rain and empress tanya ah yeah expire rain tanya's character in this expansion was probably she had more spotlight i feel like than the other characters like sector cyrax and noob and maybe even havoc not a bad thing i think it's all really good these are all just good things right this scene specifically right here uh, blew me away again cinematics man uh, mortal kombat 1 absolutely nailed it right here this looks like a freaking movie this this scene i was like blown away by i was like there's no way that we're seeing this right now and then it looks this freaking good the dragon Oren. oh my gosh speaking to tanya like that i mean this right here Th this yes this i wanted more not just of this scene but all the work that was put into that i wanted more of that hard work but i feel like that uh it's kind of where it left off so talking about the good here again the characters i love it the world they had a lot of really cool scenes a lot of new fun iterations for the characters we already know and love now let's talk about the bad i'm not gonna lie that's kind of where the good ends don't get it twisted by the way the whole story as a whole overall i like it's good but we gotta talk about a lot of the elephants in the room and there's a lot of them so the bad i'm gonna get nitpicky so i'm sorry i know a lot of this probably doesn't even matter but me watching the story there's a lot of things that i noticed that i was like ah that doesn't really make sense though again nitpicky but why are they even talking right here they should be immediately attacking as soon as they see havoc walk out and they realize Gears is like, this day's not gonna end well. It's like, yeah, so what are you doing standing there? If you bum rush them, you have the advantage. Why are you waiting for them to attack you? A lot of their decisions in the story just did not make sense. They do what movies typically do and they let the bad guy just monologue. And it's like, if you just attacked him right here, this story would end right now. <laughs> and right here, Gears is like, wait, me? What, what? I didn't do nothing. You're telling me two little minions were able to take down the timekeeper himself, Garrus? No. G that right there, that scene, I was like, no, 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 no. That there's no shot we'll come back to this scene in a minute because we have to talk about something else that happens way later this scene right here Liu kang decides to finally show off his true god powers multiple enemies and instantly kind of like scorpion the first uh first part of the story just burns them all no problem J multiple enemies gone in two seconds and he never uses that again ever and again going back to this scene what is Liu kang doing he could burn all these enemies in two seconds and yet he's just fighting one minion one-on-one -on -one, and that means Minion seems to be holding him aloft. None of these minions should be being able to take on Liu Kang one on one at all. And there's a couple other examples of things like this where, when you really think about it, and again, I know it's all for theatrics and to keep the story moving, I get that. I'm trying to enjoy it as I watch it, but there are just things that are too obvious that don't make sense that kind of just stop the story in their tracks. And you go, wait, that why would that that wouldn't happen and because it's so obvious it makes me enjoy the story just that much less unfortunately Liu Kang has armies he's got so many people but yet he sends only three in to Havoc's realm to rescue Garrus we got Scorpion Sector Cyrax three people really oh and for the sake of the story Liu Kang can't go because we all know he would demolish them in like one second another example they're being chased by tons of Havoc's minions and all of them they got fire they got missiles they got water magic Tanya has her staff and stuff and yet nobody turns around to doing about all these minions in like one blast right here scorpion does 
and they seem to never do that again like they could stop all those minions and yet they just keep running for what feels like no reason r.i.p rain man this scene still gets me so good if havoc has full control over the maze and like what's happening in there why is he letting them do anything right here tanya has what feels like hours to talk to the dragon Orin, and there's no other minions what did havoc just like run out of them they have so much time to figure out a plan it all just feels kind of like a scapegoat like uh they've been being chased forever now and now all, all of a sudden there's just no more minions to chase him down in this room all the doors are open by the way and we know this because these guys show up no problem and again there's no other minions oh yeah side thought uh tanya can just magically talk to dragons and no one else can okay and it happens to save their ass wild and then right here oh no cyrax seems to fall like what seems 20 feet maybe in a suit of armor and like that's not really a death fall i don't feel like and then yet johnny cage tries to manually get down scorpion uses the rope sector can fly why and then okay she does explain she goes oh, i can only fly short distances that is a short distance this could this this whole thing right here could have been over with in 10 seconds sector can literally fly cyrax you're in a suit of armor you're more geared up than a football player you fell 20 feet you're fine now another big elephant in the room right here i love noob saiba i love chaos behan this is great but it was over so quickly i didn't even feel like we really even saw him we saw him for like two scenes he fights a few people right here loses and then just goes back to Liu Kang, and he's healed i feel like we saw nothing of noob's true potential and i was kind of hoping that we would oh yeah nobody's guarding garris by the way no minions nothing They're, they just can show up and save him in two seconds no problem no one's guarding him or the kami dogu like no guards at all and they're not very well protected because they can just pick him up and leave a lot of flaws that i don't think titan have uh, would really let happen. Oh, I'm Bihan again. I'm saved. Don't worry, but I'm still an asshole. The biggest prime example of letting the bad guy monologue. He shows up with the Kami Dogu and everyone's just talking smack. Liu Kang, the god here, new back to Bihan, Sector, Cyrax, and they're just letting Havoc pull out the Kami Dogu right here. What are you doing? Attack. Attack right now. Like, this whole thing should not be happening at all. And Liu Kang's like, what are we doing, guys? We should be... Everyone rush him right now. Rush him, please. They're just watching him become powerful. Look at this right here. Even if you're late to the game, attack right now. I don't know. That all just felt weird. I was like, I'm watching this. Why are you guys watching this? You need to be attacking him. In the First of all, the second he shows up and right now he's walking away. What are you doing? Attack him. I know it's for the movie. It's for the theatrics. I'm trying to understand that, but man, it's just so oh yeah there's the fireball where was that 20 seconds ago Liu Kang? they have titan havoc surrounded havoc's gonna lose this fight again no one's deciding to rush him they're gonna hear his speech desist havoc how about you just attack him and kill him who cares he's the big bad guy what are you doing letting him monologue again all of his minions are gone it's just him versus like what eight or nine havoc's gonna lose this battle against a god and other people and yet again they let him do his thing he tears off his limbs thus replicating himself and creating more minions and they just keep letting it happen as soon as you see the first guy pop up what are you doing you need to be attacking him but they see this can you see this person come down and they see oh oh he's generating a body okay let's not let that happen again let's rush him right now but instead they let him tear off more and more and more arms creating another army they got to deal with again it's like why did you guys want to attack 10 seconds ago what are you doing and first of all this is a uh, havoc's main purpose of creating more minions is tearing off limbs and yet when he ultimately loses to noob cybot that's another conversation by the way uh what he does is just tear off havoc's limbs look at him why is he not regenerating the limbs and creating more people like he just was five minutes ago that's a big inconsistency that i was like wait you were using the limbs to create more people and now that your limbs are off you're having trouble you're defeated huh let's go let's go back to that too noob cybot defeating titan havoc gets under my skin more than cassie cage defeating shinnok back in mkx like there's no shot that titan havoc loses to anybody but Liu kang Liu kang with the help of his friends that's great that's a good story like i need my friends help to defeat this guy but noob cybot just does it solo ah uh, yeah uh no no i get he's the main new character like they want to give him some form of redemption i guess also what is this three on one what are you guys talking about two johnnies and an ashra versus one guy who's already down what is it it's one minion what are you guys doing it's a johnny johnny and ashra versus one dude there's a lot more people to fight Liu kang and noob are just chill 
come back here and yet these three are just bum rushing one dude anyways anyways noob defeating havoc like this i was like there's just i'm sorry there's just no way i believe that you wanted to give noob a redemption arc have him help Liu kang defeat havoc yeah that's great but again to have him be so arrogant th that he does it himself and we have to believe that he did it himself i get he's powerful he's got the chaos magic in him yeah that's great but even then i still find it hard to believe that he alone defeated titan havoc not only titan havoc titan havoc with the uh six kamidogu essentially the infinity stones yeah, noob just happened to take him down <sighs> okay i'll stop ranting about that that was like the biggest thing that i was like there's no actual shot so let's say we accept that okay noob defeats Titan Havoc. they have to put him down for a little while so while they can heal him and that's the end luke king's like hey we're gonna take care of uh noob here you guys can go and chill scorpion and cyrax kind of make up and have like a wholesome moment and that is it that is literally the end like right after this scene uh roll credits no end scene by the way now again let me reiterate that i understand it's all for theatrics the cinematics i get it i'm not trying to judge the story too hard it's a video game story and it's a fighting game story at that they're not meant to be absolute masterpieces this isn't avengers endgame even though they're trying to be i just feel like there were some inconsistencies and some rather large plot holes that i feel like could have been avoided had they gone uh, a couple different directions small directions small choices too now with all that on the table again i liked it it was fun it was cool to see new characters in new ways like kenshi emperor rain tanya takeda it was all really cool and a lot of fun if you want to break down the story and really get nitpicky like i have been then yeah there are a lot of i think issues i'm not gonna lie i felt it was a bit rushed it was a bit underwhelming overall i mean we got introduced to titan havoc at the very beginning and then barely an hour and a half later we're defeating him he didn't really feel like a big bad guy like not really a true villain he just needed more time to like build himself up become the big titan that he's supposed to be be a bigger threat people needed to die besides just rain he needed to be an absolute beast an absolute menace or even luke king was struggling to defeat him he needed needs help and yet again uh the noob cyber who just got out of the doctor's office that same day was able to defeat him so overall review of the story it was fun it was cool but i feel like it had its issues overall and i hope that if they make an expansion three that three goes on to explain a lot of this or maybe even fix a lot of this not only that but aside from paying for the characters you know the three dlc characters and then the three guest characters let's say you paid 50 bucks for all that if you paid seven bucks per character it's 42 bucks which then makes the story eight bucks so it's kind of like a movie ticket eight bucks for an hour and a half movie can't really be too mad so if you guys want a full-on number review of the chaos reigns expansion for mortal kombat 1 i would probably give it a 5 out of 10 it could have been a lot worse i think but it definitely could have been a lot better i wasn't super disappointed nor was i super pleased now with that being said i do want to hear from you guys down below in the comments what were your thoughts on the chaos reign story keep it civil and mostly polite if you can but i do want to hear your thoughts overall did you like it did you hate it let me know down below if you want more mortal kombat content subscribe here for more turn that bell on so you don't miss a thing and go ahead and click into these videos next you're gonna find tons of new stuff for Mortal Kombat 1, like news, guides, reactions, and more.